It's a tools is another one of those libraries where people don't really know about it, but a lot of people would find a lot of use in it. And that's kind of what this whole, you know, Python is awesome series about, trying to expose some of the cooler, less known things of Python. It's a tools is actually very similar to collections, um, in a sense, just where collections uh, deals with all types of collection types. It at all specifically deals with iterators. Now I'm not going to talk about what an iterator is in this video. I actually made a video on generators uh, and a generator is an iterator essentially. But this library provides tools to work with iterators or to iterate you know, over uh, collections in you know different ways. So to start we're going to import iter tools. Oops. It to tools and I'm going to import it as IT just because I don't want to you know type out editor tools a lot and much like the collections video I've picked out a few of the ones that I think are the most useful um, I might be a bit biased in you know the exact sort of things that I program you know with regards to how useful I consider these things so it might be worth looking at the entire module and see if there's anything else in there that is useful for you because there is a lot of things in there it's not like collect I think collections only has about eight it's a tools is like 15 or 16 so it'd be worth looking in there. We're going to start with the cycle. So if I were to have, say, a tuple of colors that went red, green, and blue, uh, the itertools.cycle, if you were to pass this in, would output red, green, blue, red, green, blue, infinitely. So if I did 4i, and we're actually going to import time as well just to make things a little easier to see what's going on so for i in it at all oh, i did the it for that exact reason didn't i uh colors it's also cycles colors print i and then time dot sleep i cannot oh my word why can i not type probably because the microphone's right in front of my face today because i did a video the other day and the microphone was over there and it didn't sound amazing so i'm I'm sacrificing myself for the sake of YouTube here. But as you can see, it's printing red, green, blue, red, green, blue, red, green, blue. So every time it reaches the end, it starts all over again. So it just means that you don't have to like keep a track of the index and then set the index back to zero uh, and then you know uh, go all the way through it. And it also doesn't store you know this infinitely long list of things in memory. Uh, one of the key things about generators is that they compute values at the time they are needed. Um, or generators or iterators, they're the same thing. So a cycle just, you know, yields the correct value as it needs it. One limitation with the cycle, however, is that there is no way to stop it outside of, you know, like a break. So if I were to put a break at the end, um, it would stop it. But outside of that, there's no way to like set the number of cycles. So say you wanted to iterate over the whole thing three times I couldn't just put like a three in here and do that I'd have to you know a set a variable that was a counter and then count up and all of that stuff or would you because it's a tools does provide a different method to handle that you do have to combine two of them it's not as clean uh, but if I just comment this out for a second what you can do is you can do for i in it.t colors and then say we set n equals three you don't have to provide it as a keyword argument but i've just done it anyway so i don't know why it's called t if i'm going to be completely honest with you uh, but what this does is it will now create three iterators for colors uh so if i do for i oh know print i it will start printing out oh it does okay you can't do n equals that's fine uh, it will print out, uh, you know, these three iterate objects, which is not, you know, super useful in itself. So you could do, you know, a, a 4J in I or whatever, but the easy way to do it is to combine it with it.chain and then have a star here and then do that. And now if I do it, you'll see it prints, uh, it iterates through uh, the collection three times and then prints all the values in it. So this chain... Uh, takes a series of iterators and iterates over all of them as though they were one. So say if you had uh, two strings, A, B, C, and D, E, F, and you had it in there like uh, this, it would iterate through them both and then uh, print out values as though they were one continuous iterator. So it's basically just combining iterators. And because our T uh, function here 
it's creating a series of iterators. If we were to, done, to then unpack them into separate arguments, we could get the chain to iterate through all the iterators and then kind of treat it as though it's n number of cycles. It's a bit of a weird one to get your head around potentially, and it's not super clean. But if you want to iterate over um, an iterator n number of times, and this is probably the best way to do it. The second thing I want to talk about is the i slice. So if we were to have like a list, for example, you know, one, two, three, and then we would do list um, one to two, uh, you could do this on a list, but you couldn't do this on an iterator. If you tried to do this slicing operation on an iterator, you would get. I forget exactly what it is. I think it's like generator expression is not subscriptable or something like that. Um, but you wouldn't be able to do it. iSlice allows you to do that exact thing. So I've set up some test data here for kind of a more real world example than just using range like I kind of saw around. So I've got some lyrics to uh, a pretty good song. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure anyone's heard of it as such. It's, it's fairly obscure, but it's good. I recommend you check it out. And we're going to iterate through over and we're just going to extract the chorus uh, here. So we're going to extract from here to here. And this is line, what, six? The line will stop from one. So it'd be six to 11 we want. So what we can do is we can do with open. Actually, uh, I'll show you what it would be like if you did it with a list first, uh, just to kind of put it into a bit more context. So if you did lyrics.txt and then we read it, as f, we could set it lines equals f dot read lines, and then we can print lines. Uh, was it six to eleven? Actually, what I probably want to do is I want to put it in an iterator, really, uh, for i and then print i dot strip. Uh, there we go. That makes things a bit easier to work out. Uh, so we so the read lines reads the entire file, splits by the new line character and assigns a list of all the lines in the document to this variable that we call lines. And then we can use uh, list slicing like this to get the sixth through 11th lines, which happen to be the chorus, and then we can print them out. And this is all well and good if you have a file that is, how long is this, like what, 54 lines long. But what if you had a file that was a million lines long, or even 54 million lines long, who knows? If you tried to read that all into memory and then try to slice it, you would probably either run into very large issues or just run out of memory completely. But what you can do instead is you can do uh, so for line in it.i slice and then pass in f. So we can actually just pass in uh, the file object. We don't even have to do something like f.read, for example. And then we can give it either a stop, so we can set, you know, if we wanted to, you know, just print out the first verse, we could do that. Or we could set a start and then a stop. Uh, and then we can print uh, line.strip in the same way, and it prints the exact same thing. So what we're doing is it's iterating through uh, this list of lines as it's processing them. So it's not storing them all at once, it's only processing them as they come. And it's essentially, you know, keeping its own track of the index and only returning uh, the 6th or 11th lines. This is incredibly useful, um, you know, to prevent you having to convert an iterator to a list. If you have any sort of iterator and you only want to, you know, a process a range, it's almost always better to do this rather than convert it to a list than this slice. I say almost always because there are a few caveats. The first one is that you cannot have negative numbers. So if we did like lines, say minus one, you couldn't have that in an iterator. An iterator wouldn't know what, uh, iSlice wouldn't know what to do with that. Uh, the other thing is that it's not so easy to get a single value. You would have to, you know, still pass like six and seven, for example, to get a single line. Um, there isn't just a way you can set, you know, a single number. The final things that I wanted to talk about in detail are the drop while and take while uh, functions. So these act similarly to the filter, but they kind of do filter until or filter from. So I'll start with the drop while first, and I have some test data here because I feel like this is probably most useful if you have like an API uh, request. So say for example, if we wanted to, you know, print everything from description onwards, so the keys, 
uh, and the values, everything from the description onwards, but we didn't know how many keys description was. What we could do is we could do uh, so with open uh, data.json uh, r as f, and I am just going to read it. I need to import JSON. I am just going to read it all in at once uh, this time, like that. And then we do 4kv, so it's a four key value in it.drop while, and then I'm going to leave that blank for now, and then we're just going to print kv. Um, you know, just for experiment sakes. But in here, we it takes the same arguments as a filter would. So it takes a callable as the first argument, and it takes our data, in this case data.items, as, as the second argument. So if you wanted to, you know, process every key after description, we could pass in lambda x, and an x zero does not equal description. So what we're saying here is that while, um, the key of of our you know API request does not equal description. Ignore the data, but then once it does equal description, we want everything after that. So a filter, you know, uh, you would only get the description key, but with this, you also get everything after it. So you can see our profile image URL, offline image URL. We uh, we make no mention of this in the actual request itself. Uh, but because our key is now description, we've now worked out that we want to process everything after that, um, or more accurately, that we want to drop everything before that. And so, you know, now that that condition is true, it just returns everything it finds. Um, the take while works similarly, it's just the other way around, I think. So it will, yeah, it will process everything up to. So what we're saying here is that while the key does not equal description, then we want to use this value. The moment it does equal description, we don't want any more values. So while the drop while would would take this and everything after it, the take while would take everything before it, but not including it. Uh, that's an important distinction to make. A number of other ITER tools functions are slight variations on built-in equivalents. So for example, you have filter false, uh, like this, uh, be it dot filter false, uh, which acts exactly the same as a filter, except it checks if a value is false rather than if a value is true. Um, you then have the count, it dot count, uh, where range stops. Uh, if I were to do it count ten, where range would stop at ten count starts at 10. You then also have it.zip longest, which works very much like zip, except uh, instead of stopping at the shortest or at the end of the shortest collection, it stops at the end of the longest collection and then you can supply a placeholder um, for values that don't exist in the shortest one. And it kind of goes on like that. And then there are a few other ones, there's like repeat and all this stuff, you know. I might as well just show you slightly. So you know, stuff like pairwise, star map, you know, and all uh, have these combinatoric, which I'd love as a word, uh, ones. So you can, you know, kind of uh, look at all the permutations of an iterator, for example. You know, there's a lot of things here. I just kind of shown off the the more, you know, useful ones because I didn't want to, I didn't want this video to be. 25,000 hours long. You know, as I say, you can have a look through it in your own time and work out if anything is useful for you. If you found this video helpful at any point, then consider liking it to let me know and maybe subscribing if you want to see more videos like it. If you do have any ideas about what you want me to cover uh, on a video, then feel free to leave them in the comments. I do look at them all and no idea is a bad idea. Uh, so feel free to leave them down below. If you want to support this channel monetarily, you can do so in two ways. The first of which is by hitting the join button or by joining uh, the Patreon, one pound a month on either, and you can be on this screen like these people. And I'll see you in the next video where I don't remember what it's gonna be. I definitely planned it. I think it might be an update video because it's been a while since I did one of them. And uh, there are a few things kind of changing around on the channel, just a little bit, there's, n there's nothing too much. Um, but I always like doing update videos to keep you guys up to check. So if you're interested in that, make sure to stop by that and I'll see you around.